We've outperformed by about 60 basis points since the uh, beginning of the, of the calendar year. Uh, and uh, yeah, the, the reasons for that have been basically we, we, we did not get spooked by all the negativity early in the year. So we, we've been fully invested since about, um, the, well, certainly since late, late February. Um, it's worth pointing out that world markets are up a lot this year. Unfortunately, a lot of those gains have been offset by uh, the rally in the Australian dollar, which has eaten into it from an Australian perspective. What we think has happened is that the gloom that we started the year with, where the world was expecting uh, interest rates in the US to rise sharply and uh, thought there was a high risk of recession, um, now we're seeing expectations for uh, a recession have, have eased enormously. I think most people think it's highly unlikely to have a recession this year. At the same time, uh, because inflation has been much more moderate than expected in the US, uh, the prospect for rate rises is, uh, is for it to happen at a much slower pace. So we're in a slightly Goldilocks world, uh, better economic growth, but lower rate rises. And the only uh, negative that comes into that is that obviously the market's gone up a lot in the US. We're almost back to all time highs. And so there may be a bit of uh, what I would call tra uh, you know, trading around this area until we break out to new, new highs. Yeah, we, we think that we may be uh, on, uh, on the verge of a bottoming in, in a long-term uh, cycle of underperformance by emerging markets uh, over, over developed markets. So we are actually overweight emerging markets at the moment. Uh, that's principally, obviously, the biggest emerging market is China. We don't think that the bearishness about China is fully justified. Uh, two things. One is that uh, domestic policy uh, is you know, ten, it's, it's two steps forward, one step back. It's not all smooth sailing, but there's definitely progress. The other thing is that um, uh, the, uh, there was a huge expectation that the uh, Chinese renminbi would devalue sharply. Uh, we think that's not going to happen, at least for a, another six to nine months. And the main reason for that is because the Chinese are currently hosting uh, the G20. And I don't think that, that means lots of, of foreign finance ministers and central bankers visiting China all, for, all through to September. Uh, we think it's highly unlikely the Chinese will allow the currency to depreciate sharply until that circus has moved on. Yeah, well, Pakistan was never going to be a huge part of our portfolio, but we, we, we do think it's a very interesting place to invest. I think we, you know, we currently have about a 2% weighting in Pakistan. I doubt we'll ever get more than about 3 4 maybe the outside 5%. But it's, a, it's an economy which most people are ignoring. Um, most people regard it as uninvestable. We don't take that view at all. Uh, it's got a long tradition of, as a stock market. There are about 500 companies listed there. And there's been a stock market in Pakistan since before uh, the, the um, separation of India and Pakistan. So it's a very well established, established stock uh, market culture. Um, I have to say I was quite surprised by my trip to Pakistan. Um, I thought it was going to be like uh, a sort of a, a rougher version of India because I spent a lot of time investing in India. Um, in fact, when I landed at the airport, it was immediately apparent the airport was far superior to most Indian airports and the road systems are far better than most in Indian road systems. So there are problems in Pakistan, but I think they're not the problems people, people really anticipate. Um, infrastructure is certainly much better than, than I expected. The poor point, the weak point in infrastructure in Pakistan historically has been power generation. And I've looked at Pakistan for many years and have refused to invest there because I, was, I just didn't believe the economy could grow very fast if they didn't something about their power generation. Now three things have happened. Uh, one is because of the improvement of, uh, of global relationships with Iran, uh, Pakistan's importing power directly from, from Iran, which is positive. Secondly, they're about to do a deal with the Qataris to import a lot of gas, which is going to help power generation. And the third thing is they've decided uh, with the help of the Chinese in part to uh, open up their brown coal deposits which is horrible for the environment but you know, rather like we have in Victoria they have a lot of brown coal in uh, Pakistan and if they, can, if they can generate lots of power using that it will be good for the economy if not good for the environment. We, we've invested in Pakistan since we launched the fund actually that's the, the first time I'd ever invested in Pakistan was since we launched this, uh, the, the Morphic Global Opportunities Fund. We invested at the time in a company called Lucky Cement we thought we'd really done, done well when we'd um, uh, made a 50% gain and got, you know, we was just so, had such an underlying nervous about Pakistan that we exited rather too soon. It's actually been a three-bagger since then. But luckily, we've come across another cement company, which we really like, called DG Khan Cement, which is the second largest cement company in Pakistan, growing very, very, very nicely. 
and um, and we think cement is the best way to play what is a, a pretty uh, steady improvement in the rate of growth in Pakistan. Um, cement is mainly used for housing, but also for infrastructure. Um, one of the things that's happened uh, that we're quite interested in is something called the Chinese-Pakistan Economic Corridor. The Chinese are very keen to develop a large port on the Arabian Sea, and they're going to build roads and rail to come from, Pakistan, from their, their border with Pakistan all the way through down to this Arabian Sea port at Gwada. And that's going to uh, result in, I think, a big pickup in the rate of consumption in cement. Cement stocks are cheap and they're very profitable and they're actually quite globally competitive. Cement, uh, Pakistan's actually a cement exporter to Afghanistan and also to Africa and the Middle East.